Hello there, it's Patty Behan, and thank you for joining me today. In this video, we're using Simon Hurley stamping foam to make all these beautiful backgrounds, and the sky's the limit to what you can do with this great tool. And to begin today, we're just going to do some basic techniques to get you started. So let me show you how. To start, we're going to make an impression using a background stamp, and I'm using the Luau stamp from Simon Hurley Create. And the first thing you have to do is heat up the foam so that it will get soft and it can take an impression. And depending on the heat tool that you use, it could take about 15 to 20 seconds. And you want to make sure you heat the entire foam and get the edges as well. And once you finish heating it, you just stamp it in to get your impression. And I'm using an acrylic block to get firm pressure as I press it into the stamp. And once that's done, you can check it out to see how it came out. And that looks pretty good. And you may have to experiment a little bit to see how long you need to heat it to get to know your heat tool and to see how it works. So now I'm going to show you how to color it in and we'll try some different ways here. But to start, we're going to make like a striped background and I'm going to use some over the moon ink from Simon Hurley first. And you get some ink onto the blending tool and just apply it straight to the foam. And then after that, I'm going to use some Rosy Cheeks ink and put the foam onto the blending tool here and go ahead and apply the ink right underneath that. And then add some more over the moon and go back up top here and go back to the rosy cheeks and then maybe I'll go back and blend it a little bit more just like so and then once that's done we're going to mist it with water lightly and then just stamp it down. And it's as simple as that. We'll use the acrylic block again to get a nice impression. And here's the result. I got a very soft background here and maybe I could have added some more ink to the foam and my image would have been a little bolder, but sometimes you want a nice subtle background so you just have to experiment as you play along with it. And since this is a dye ink pad, this cleans up very easily with a baby wipe. And now I'm going to show you another way to use the same impression. I'm just going to take the pad and put the ink directly onto the foam like so. And I have a few harsh edges, so I'm using the blending tool to blend it a little bit more. I'll give it a quick spritz of water and I should have had my cardstock ready here but we'll stamp it down. Uh, let me grab that block and just to make sure I get a nice impression. And here's that result and what I'll do is to stop the ink and water from moving I'll dry it with the heat tool real quick and the more water you missed onto there the looser the image but I like how that came out now let's try one more thing we'll put the ink directly to the foam and we won't wet it this time and quickly stamp it down and then that's how that came out. I really like how it's bolder at the edges and softer towards the middle. So that's another way you can use it with the ink pads. And just to bring these back in here, you'll see the different looks we got using the same impression. 
And so now the beauty of this is that you can reuse this over and over again. So you'll just have to heat it up until it gets flat and the image disappears. And if you see that you have some ink on there, you can go ahead and get a baby wipe and wipe it off again. And then you're ready for the next impression. This time I'm using the prom dress stamp and we're going to be coloring in individual portions after we make our impression. I love the bold lines on this stamp. It's going to make for a nice background. So again, we heat it up. And then we'll press it into the stamp. You can choose any portion of the stamp you like. I'm going in the bottom left corner here. And that came out really great. This is going to make for a really nice background. And we're going to put this aside and we're going to color in the individual flowers. So I'll get some prom queen ink and we're going to zoom in here so you get a closer look. I'm using the detail blending tool so I can get into these little areas to color. And maybe I think I'll start with over the moon instead and I'll color the center of the flowers first. And this is going to take a while to color so we're going to speed it up here. And while I'm doing this, um, I wanted to tell you that even though it takes a while to color in the different portions of the stamp, we are going to wet it in the end so the ink is going to reconstitute itself and you still need to work up quickly but you know you don't have to fuss about going too fast. And make sure you color in the whole entire stamp. I did some even in the background. And then we spritz it with water and we use our block to stamp it down. And that came out really great. I'm just gonna heat it here a second and then you're done. I really love this one. On to the next. So I'm heating my foam just to get rid of the image. And this time we're going to use the painted line stamps and we're gonna see if we could get two images in the same time frame. So I'll do it this way and I'll turn it and do it the other way, just like so. And yep, I guess it looks like it worked. That was great. So now we know we have a little open time to give it a couple of stamps. So let's go ahead and color this one. And I'm going to use some clear skies again and randomly put some ink on there and then some later gator. I missed a little spot at the bottom there. Then we missed it with water and stamp it down and heat it up to dry. And there you go. We have a plaid background here. That's pretty cool. Next, we're gonna stamp through a stencil. I'm using the bubble wrap stencil and first I'll place it down onto the Make Art Station. I'll reheat my stamping foam. As you can see, you can use this over and over again and it really stands up to multiple uses. Press it into the stencil and there you go. Even though there's just a little bit of a raised portion, it really does a great job with the stencils. So now we'll just color it in. We'll make dots of color randomly again. I use Psych and then I'll use some triple berry. And then next I'll use some tropical tango and we'll fill in all the empty spaces and add a little bit as we need it. And then we'll mist it with water and go ahead and stamp it down. And We'll dry it after we do that, and that looks really cool. Next, we're going to get some texture off of a garbage can that was in my office, and that came out really well. 
And for this one, we'll just do a solid background. I'm using Minty Fresh. And we'll just stamp that without misting it and see how that comes out. Perfect. And then we'll get a second impression by misting it this time. Just to show you, there's multiple ways to use this. And that's that technique. We'll dry it. And on to the next. Next, we're going to use cookie cutters. We've already seen that we can stamp it twice after we heat it up, but let's see if we could get more than two impressions. So if we work quickly, we can just go ahead and randomly make a background here. And you can see it's working pretty well. So you do have some open time to get a nice impression. Now I'll just go ahead and do random dots of colors again for this one. And I used Crown Me, Overzealous, and Clear Skies. And then once that's done, we're going to spritz it with water again. Let me get my card there and stamp that down. And there you go, we'll heat it up. And depending how much water you use, you'll get either a crisp or a fluid image. So now let's take a look at all the things we've made today. I think this one is my favorite, where we colored in the images separately. And then for the next one is our stripe technique. Then here's the one where I just stamped it dry. Here's our plaid. And I like how this came out. It's just a unique texture. Here's through the stencil. And here's using a household texture. There's just so much that you can do with this foam and this was just the basics. So let us know in the comments below which was your favorite. And if you'd like to try to do this, we have a link to the full supply list in the description box below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more crafty videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.